Hi, I'm Sherelle Walters Rodriguez and welcome to CCPL Get Transformed. We're in the new Central Library. The long-awaited doors have opened and we're excited about being able to share with you some of the amenities and the new things that are happening here at Central. When you walk in, you're going to notice immediately that it's bright and colorful and that there are different rooms and areas for you to collaborate or do something that you would like to do here at our new Central Library. I think the first thing that everybody's going to be surprised about when they first come in is the transformation of the space. It's just amazing. You know, with the mix of furniture that we have, it really kind of creates a vibrant and modern library. We are incorporating various types of technology and our librarians will have iPads, so they'll be roaming around the library in order to help people where they are on the floor. The Central Library has a lot of features that maybe the other branch libraries don't necessarily have yet. We do have some expanded services, some expanded spaces. The small business area is our largest yet. The partnership with Cooperative Extension means that we have a nice expanded space in that children's room. We have the space set up so people can meet, so they can congregate, so they can work together collaboratively. Um, in fact, we had to create a specific quiet space for people who want that quiet space. Out on the floor, we'll also have some stations where people can work together, um, they can share their computer screens with one another using the technology and the monitors that are placed throughout the library. So our librarians are here to kind of help guide you through all of that information that's out there to help you learn more than just gather pieces of information. So they're there, they're, they're a mentor, they're a coach. Um, they genuinely care about you and your learning goals. You can come to experience that. You can do that with the librarian or you can do it individually. You can access the books, but you can also do some hands-on learning in the maker space. We have multiple meeting spaces that are free and available for any Chesterfield County resident with a library card, and the library card is free as well. We have the big meeting room, which can house over 100 people. That meeting room has been redone and now includes a demonstration kitchen, so there's going to be a lot of wonderful programming coming out of that. We also have some small meeting rooms for people to book so they can work together on projects or they can meet with clients. We have the individual small study spaces which house about two people where students can come to work, where individuals can come for that quiet space. And of course we have the small business suite where our entrepreneurs and our small business owners can come and do their work. It's a space where everyone is welcome, which is, um, which is a great thing. There are people from all walks of life, people who have totally different beliefs, who are coming together in a shared purpose of learning more and bettering their lives. So Jennifer and Carolyn gave you an idea of what Central looks like, but we encourage you to come out and experience it yourself. We are located in our new maker space. It is a little different than what you saw when we first closed. It is much brighter, wider areas for you to collaborate, areas of course for you to experience using the 3D printer. And if you don't know how to use it, we do have instruction on that. One of our librarians will teach you how to make whatever you choose to on our 3D printer. Now speaking of making things, we had Maker Expo this past summer, a great success. Here's a look. I'm shaking apart the computers, just we should be moving all the expensive parts and maybe like rewiring them. Gabriel has uh, Asperger's and he's very digital. He's always on his phone, he's always on the computer. He's not a very social person. I think I took like maybe three-fourths percent of the computer apart already. I mean, it's just hard getting him out, but the Maker Expo every year has been something that he looks forward to. And honestly, today, 
Um, this is the longest he has been in one spot on one thing without his phone. Uh, he's talking to people and he's really engaged and he's been at this spot for almost an hour and it makes me want to cry but I'm super excited and this is looking like something that we'll probably want to get some tools for him to work on at home. The, the crafts and, and everything, he's tried a lot of the stations and he gets his hands dirty and, it, and it's just nice to see where he's trying to find his niche. Hopefully it will help us with his transition out of high school, so it really makes us happy. We love the Maker Expo and, and I learn a lot of stuff too. It'll probably be just tech support <laughs> or, I don't know, just anything really. I think it was one of the first Maker Expos that they had. I really just didn't know what to expect, but the moment we walked in, it was you could just see the light come on, and every year we make it a point to come, and I'm just sad that we only have this opportunity, you know, once a year. It's just, it's diverse, a lot of things, you know what I mean? Especially 3D printing, and uh, I've got my own 3D printer to think around fixing, so. But it gives us every year something more to look forward to, and more directions uh, and ideas in which to travel for him. I'm excited. Well, I hope you enjoyed what you saw at Maker Expo. We're pleased to say that Maker Expo will be back here at Central next year, and it will give you an opportunity to see our new dig. So there's, we're so excited about that. But as you know, what we do at the library is we try to make learning fun, and I think we succeed pretty well. We're in the children's section of Central Library, and as you can see, there's some children over my shoulder playing with our new touch screen that's full of a lot of apps that help with learning. Well, this past summer, we had several different, very popular programs. Most of them were full through registration. We had African Safari, we had Mickey's Magic Show, we had the Legend of the Player Piano, and many more. And another thing that we're doing, our Ettrick Matoica Library has done very well. They partnered with uh, some of the organizations in that area to develop a program called the Friends of Ettrick Learning Center. We're gonna allow you to take a look right now. It's amazing how quickly this program came together. We had citizens from, from the Ettrick area come to Mr. Thompson, the Matoka school board rep, and said, hey, we got this concept, we got this idea. They pitched it to us and it wasn't a, an issue or idea, can we afford it? It was, we, can, we can't afford not to do this. We had our graduation from the Friends of Ettrick Early Learning Center. Um, this was our first year, we began in December, and we had three children of our group of five to eight, depending on the day, um, students that we have, three of them will be heading to kindergarten in the fall. So we had a graduation ceremony for those three kids. It may look small in numbers. The chance it gives those children is, is just, it's, it's not small, it's, it's major. Every child is important, and we want to give every child every opportunity to be all that they can be, and it starts right here, right now. And they said they needed volunteers, and I said, oh, you know, free preschool for kids? I've helped, what do you need? And I didn't know at the time that I would be scrubbing down the trailer and then moving on to being a coordinator and teacher. I jumped into it thinking I would just be a volunteer, but it soon became obvious that they needed um, more. I'm not an educator, so I had no idea how to make a lesson plan. I didn't know what preschool kids um, should be doing. I've been a stay-at-home mom for 11 years, so I knew that I was very hands-on with my kids, and I basically just amped up what I would be doing at home for the kids and making it into a curriculum and making it into lessons that would stick. Knowing that we had a goal, knowing that we were filling a need in the community, and just um, trying my best to step up and give them you know, the kind of education that someone would pay for. It was a free program, but I wanted every day, I wanted the space to look like something you would pay for, and I wanted the level of their education to be something that someone would pay for. It's into the county, uh, we have a little bit more poverty. They may not have Wi-Fi at home, they may not have computers at home, and to be able to bring the kids down here, do the research, uh, bring them in this learning environment is huge. It's one of the smallest libraries in the system, but it's one of the most used libraries in the system, and it's, it's, it's a community focal point. 
The library has been fantastic. Um, the Ettrick branch has stepped up um, in amazing ways. Um, we couldn't have done it without them. They scheduled um, community helpers, as we call them, fire department, police department, the uh, parks department with their community center, and they would schedule special uh, visitors in that way, and they would put um, a STEAM or STEM curriculum together. So every Wednesday night, we would sort of be focused more on STEM. It's just been amazing what we've been able to do with these kids, and uh, you know, it's a success story in, in less than a year. Maybe, we, maybe it's three, maybe it's six next year, but no matter what it is, we're impacting lives. That's what we're supposed to do. I'm sitting in what used to be the foyer of the Old Central. This area is some place where you can come relax and enjoy some of the beauty, courtesy of our partners, Cooperative Extension. It's also off of a patio that you can go out and enjoy some of what Mother Nature has to offer. Speaking of Mother Nature, Ettrick Matoica and Meadowdale are also making use of Mother Nature. They have planted gardens and those gardens are used for teaching and for providing. I served as Vice President of the Concerned Citizens of Ettrick, also Vice President of Ettrick Neighborhood and Business Foundation, and as a result of that I met Angela and we talked about the purpose of a community garden. The ultimate thing was building a community. That grant came along with some other needs that the library expressed a desire, presented to the body and they approved that we would um, provide Ettrick Matoka Library with a grant for $13,000. One of the elements was indeed to begin to open up a community garden, which has been a great thing. In this community, we need more fresh vegetables. We need beauty. We need the community to get involved because whatever we do in this community, it has to be a partnership. It has to be with passion, and it has to be with commitment. So we do have a lot of people come in. They not only are able to get some of the vegetables that we harvest from inside, but they make sure that the garden is maintained as well when our regular volunteers are here. Some people here are lower income and they may not have the resources. Um, they may be able to go to Food Lion, but if they don't have enough money to get them, at least they know sometimes for a few of their simpler vegetables, they can come here and get them from the garden. We're super engaged with the community in this way, and they're also engaging with us. So they definitely see this place as a place that belongs to them as a part of their community, and we just help make it better, and I'm glad that they're taking part in it. When I come here on Wednesday evenings, and I see the garden blossoming, and I see the people, volunteers have come. They have worked the garden and it's just beautiful. It's, it's, it's satisfying because the community has done this. The community is working with the services that are offered in this community. And that's what it's all about. I want to thank the Chesterfield Library for bringing um, a book of this nature, which as she talked about, you know, it's being lauded in many areas and then in some areas of the country it's being considered controversial. So I appreciate that Chesterfield is willing to open minds and share other perspectives with all of the county residents. I really, really enjoyed this book and I just decided, hey, great opportunity to come out. My dad is a state trooper and I think about this stuff a lot. Some people are just like driving down the road and are not necessarily doing anything wrong and they might not make it home. I think about that a lot.
Well, if you missed that particular author event, no worries. We have journalist and author Beth Macy who will be here in January. And that's one of many author events that we have here at CCPL. I encourage you to pick up a copy of Loud and Clear. We produce one every quarter that tells you some of the wonderful happenings going on here at Chesterfield County Public Library. In addition to Beth Macy, we also have something for teens that CCPL is very excited to be able to host. That is Masquerade, the Masquerade Ball. This year's theme will be Percy Jackson. So your preteens and teens can come on out. That means middle school and high schoolers can come out to North Courthouse Road Library, dress as their favorite Percy Jackson character or some other character that they might enjoy and have a great time at our library. In addition to Masquerade, we have the Artisans Bazaar. We're always excited about being able to partner with vendors in the area who produce handcrafted materials that you can give for Christmas or whatever holiday you celebrate. We also have Black History Month coming up in February, several different programs planned for this year. And again, we encourage you to look at our Loud and Clear magazine or log on to our new website at library.chesterfield.gov to get information about what's going on at CCPL. Well, hope you enjoy this edition of CCPL Get Transformed. We'll see you next time. I'm Sherelle Walters-Rodriguez.